is a juvenile, and you can see it's a it's the distinctive feature, even in the juveniles, is this big spine that runs up the middle of them. And there is an invasive kelp that came um, to New Zealand back in the 1980s and it's all around New Zealand, gets carried on the hulls of ships and in ballast water and so you find it throughout most of the main ports and harbours around New Zealand. Unfortunately um, in 2010 it was discovered in Fiordland just in one wee spot and since then it's gone on to grow and grow. It grows into this really long kelp so this is the bit that attaches to the shore and you can see it's got a really long blade and it captures its energy from the sunlight so it photosynthesizes like other plants. It's really easy to identify Undaria because first of all they have this really long spine that runs down the middle of them so they're really distinctive compared to our native seaweeds and when they get mature they develop this thing called a sporophyte which is down at the base of the seaweed and it's this wrinkly thing down here and that's where all the spores or the seeds come from. This one's almost mature and when it gets mature it starts to release these spores into the water column and then they go with the currents and settle out and make baby Undaria. We're really worried about the impact that Undaria can have on the incredible unique um, native ecosystem under the water here in Fiordland. We've got so many iconic features in Fiordland, like you know, you've all seen footage of the black corals and the and the red corals, um, but also just on the rock walls, these beautiful native seaweed, really diverse native seaweed communities. And the problem with Undaria is it grows so quickly and so thickly that it shades out all the other animals underneath it, kind of smothers them. One of the biggest challenges with dealing with invasive species underwater is that you can't see them. So it's really hard to get people interested in doing something about them when it's a problem that hardly anybody gets to see. But it's also really hard to detect invasive species like when they get to a place, to detect them early enough to have any chance of doing something about it. Um, and you can see that Fiordland is this massive coastline and it's same with New Zealand. We've got such an extensive coastline and so what we really need is um, everybody's eyes to be part of the solution. So when you're out in the seashore and you're snorkeling or you're mucking around in the rock pools and you see, see something that you haven't seen before, or you just don't think it looks quite right, or maybe you remember seeing it off one of those um, invasive species cards, just tell someone. There's these amazing 0800 lines you can call, take a note of where you are, take a photo of what you've seen if you can, and report it because all of these invasive species incursions that we're dealing with around New Zealand have started from somebody reporting one of those species in a place and thinking this isn't quite right. The thing about invasive species like Undaria and all of these other species that just don't belong here in this environment is they're all just one boat ride away from here. So all it took for Undaria to get here was one hull that had an Undaria plant growing on it coming and, and maybe dropping anchor or pulling up to one of the barges um, in this area. So what you can do about it is if you are lucky enough to go in a boat, ask the skipper or the owner of that boat if they um, have taken the time to make sure that the hull of their vessel is clean. That's the main way that these invasive species sort of hitchhike their way around the country and into places like this. The way we're dealing with Undera and Fjordland, it's a, uh, a collective effort. You've got uh, research going on here. We have had Otago University coming in uh, on research plots, writing papers on how it's affecting this environment, how quick it grows. So we learn about this uh, invasive seaweed. We then can develop tools to work towards removing it out of this environment. Uh, MPI contracted Pure Salt to come in here and develop a tool to be able to help for uh, removal of this invasive seaweed. Uh, Maria and myself, who own Pure Salt, we are also construction divers, so we've used tools in the past that have allowed us to remove stuff from the sea floor to the surface. So we modified that tool, which is essentially a big underwater vacuum cleaner. You bring that vacuum cleaner in here, set it up on a barge, and you put some construction divers down with some research divers, and they literally go and weed this seaweed out, put it into the vacuum cleaner, and that brings it to the surface for us. When we get it to the surface, it can be processed. One good way of processing the seaweed is to sterilise it. So heat up our hot tub we have on board to a really high temperature, which you wouldn't want to get into. Put the weed in there, 
and essentially make a big broth out of it. It sterilizes it, the spores are no longer active, and you can then put the seaweed back into the ocean or put it ashore.